Hey there, it's J-Rod here for Rich Retirement TV and today I'm going to take some of your questions. I've got a great list of questions uh, from, from you over the last couple of weeks and uh, they're piling up. It's time for me to let loose. Uh, let's go ahead and dig right on in. We got a question here from Roy L who asks, what's the fastest way to make money in the markets? Uh, and I go three easy answers, small caps, options, and crypto. Uh, why do I say small caps? Small caps are stocks that have, or companies that have market valuations of $2 billion or less. Uh, really small stocks have the capacity to uh, have big gains in short periods of time. Uh, and if you're looking to make money uh, quickly over one week, one month, uh, three months, six months, one year period, small caps outperform large caps over every period. In fact, I got a chart here going all the way back to 1979, the Russell 2000, which is the small cap benchmark, uh, has a gain of, a max gain that is, of 97%. Uh, options are great. Uh, they're more complicated than just buying or selling stocks, but options give you uh, the ability to turn any large cap stock into a small cap stock. I mean, you can get options out on, uh, you know, say Facebook or something for, you know, $10 or less, depending on, you know, where your strike price is, what your expiration is, all that stuff. If you haven't noticed, I don't like expensive stocks. Uh, you know, they're number one, they cost a lot of money and uh, they're slower to make big moves than smaller price stocks. So options give you the kind of the, the way to make any stock, a, you know, any big stock, a, a small stock, uh, you know, you get that, you get volatility. They are more speculative, you know, small caps and options are more speculative than say your large cap stocks. However, uh, they give you more movement. And if you're feeling really spry, cryptocurrency also offers you uh, a really great way to earn big returns quickly. In, in a sense, cryptocurrency is even more complicated than, uh, than options. It requires you to have, a, you know, a, again, a different type of account. They trade uh, 24 hours a day. There are some that have gained you know, 100%, 200%, 300% in a single day. So if you're looking to make money quickly, uh, you know, crypto is a great way to do it. But again, all three of these types of uh, investments, small caps, options, cryptocurrency, they are very speculative, but you know, a little bit of, uh, of risk capital thrown into these areas could pay off big in the short term. All right, next question. How is Biden's inflation going to affect my uh, retirement savings? This question comes from John F. Great question, John. Uh, well, inflation is going to affect your savings in two ways, right? So inflation tends to put pressure on stock and bond prices. So in periods of rising inflation, you might see stocks underperform relative to other periods in, in history. So we may not see going forward uh, those 10% plus annual return years for stocks uh, that we've seen, uh, say, over the last you know, 10 years or so in periods of low inflation or even deflation. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you're going to have to you're going to have to make sure that you're earn the income that you're earning on your retirement savings is beating out the rate of inflation. So uh, let's say that inflation is running like 2.5 percent a year or more. You know, the the average annually is about 3.2 percent over the last 30 years. But let's just say uh, you know that we're at two two and a half or three percent you're just going to make you're going to need to make sure uh, that you're earning whatever that rate of inflation is above your your regular return so if you're looking to make 10 percent a year you've got to add in that two percent or three percent of inflation on top of the 10 percent so you need to be earning 13 percent a year but personally while i do think we're going to see above average inflation at least over the next year or so uh, we're not going to go back to a period of hyperinflation like we saw in the 1970s. Uh, we may even go back to a period of, of say, disinflation where prices uh, are going down over time. You know, ultimately, whatever the rate of inflation is, you just need to make sure that you're earning that on top of 
uh, you know, the returns that, you know, you're, you're targeting in any given year. All right. So next question, do you think that Afghanistan is going to have an effect on stocks? This one comes from Jackson. Hey there, Jackson. Thank you for this, uh, for this great question. I, I do think that in the short term, maybe we see an effect on stocks. I mean, we saw, uh, you know, this week uh, that I'm, that I'm filming this, uh, it was the week that, uh, that Kabul fell. We've seen uh, stocks, you know, take take it a little bit on the chin, but I don't think that that's going to be an effect long term. Uh, you know, if we go back in history to the fall of Saigon, uh, the S and P actually rose six percent in the following month and fifteen percent over the next year. So the end of wars or the end of conflict doesn't typically have a, a major effect on stocks, whereas the start of wars typically are good for the markets. Uh, you go back to the, uh, to the Iraq war 2003, uh, we started uh, engagements there in March of 2000, uh, 2003. Uh, and over the next one year period, stock market gained. So it's not, uh, war's, uh, war's good for stocks. End of war, not necessarily bad for stocks, but uh, meh. But I do like to use the VIX, uh, which is a measure of protective put options on the S&P 500 as a fear gauge. And right now, uh, despite the hectic headlines, it's way below uh, the, uh, the long-term average at 20. In fact, it's sitting right now uh, below its level at the start of the pandemic. So what we're looking at right now, COVID, the Delta variant, what we're seeing in Afghanistan, which is a tragedy, uh, but it's not having a material effect on investors. And I don't expect to see a long-term effect of Afghanistan on the markets. All right, so next question. Do you really think that stocks can hold their gains through the end of the year from Francisco? Great question. I sure do. Uh, you take a look at, uh, you know, just the data that we've seen over the last, you know, several months. Unemployment continues to fall. Earnings are great. In fact, we had a blockbuster uh, earnings season that we're still kind of in a little bit, but uh, most of the earnings were in for the second quarter. They were freaking great. Uh, you know, and we've got a favorable Federal Reserve uh, that's hell bent on expansion. So the policies that they have in place, uh, we're not going to see interest rates rise uh, probably very much at all over the next couple of years. Uh, they're going to continue to uh, implement their quantitative easing program uh, that's really kept, uh, you know, kept liquidity in the stock market uh, on the rise stock price on the rise. I don't see those programs really tapering in a serious way uh, over the next several years. But more than anything, I think that history is pointing to big year end gains. I actually use a correlation technique that was pioneered by billionaire hedge fund master uh, Paul Tudor Jones that quietly helped him make billions uh, during the 1987 uh, stock market crash. And right now, 2021 is looking like three of the market's best looking years. 1954, 1995, and 1958. Uh, in each of those years, from the point we are now through year end, uh, the S&P gained 17%, 10%, and 16% respectively. So uh, still a lot more of upside, you know, from where we are now in 2021 through the year end. I actually built a, a composite stock chart of the 10 years that look most like 2021. And if it holds true, we should actually see a very strong September, a trough in October, and a roaring November and December to close out the year. I still think for sure uh, that we've got upside for stocks uh, to close out 2021. Next question comes from Darlene in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey there, Darlene. I'm actually from Jacksonville, so I got a lot of love for the city. I got a lot of love for the state. Good to hear from you. So your question, I want to invest, but I have no idea what I'm doing. That's okay. You're here right now watching this video. And honestly, I cater a lot of my content to folks that know nothing about the market so that you can get started fast. So the step one, get yourself a trading account if you don't already have one. I like E-Trade. I like TD Ameritrade. Fidelity's good. You know, Schwab's good. Uh, you know, Robinhood is uh, very popular with the, uh, with the kids now. 
Uh, but there's a lot of a lot of great commission free brokerage accounts that you can open up and start trading immediately. Uh, you know, I'd say get in there, take a look. I mean, I, I, I like I said, I love E-Trade. They have a fantastic paper trading platform that looks identical to their actual trading platform. Uh, and I do a lot of demo videos in there to show to show you how easy it is to uh, to make trades. I love that platform. But you know, again, any of these platforms are great. The, the most important thing is that you get in there and you start trading. You know, uh, once you've got yourself an account, keep watching the videos here. You know, I do, uh, you know, my stocks at rock column every single week where I highlight a stock pick, a uh, stock, a breakout stock that I really like for the week. Uh, you know, Zach Scheidt, my colleague, also does fantastic videos on not only, you know, stock rec uh, recommendations that he likes, uh, but also really hard hitting market commentary. And in case you didn't know, Zach's a former hedge fund manager. So he knows not just stocks, but he knows how to manage money. You know, he's managed money for, for really wealthy clients. So he's, you know, he's got another uh, really good uh, you know, realm of content uh, that he's bringing in. Keep watching our videos and, uh, you know, we'll get you everything you need to know about trading stocks that you might want to take a look at uh, and more. So, you know, don't, don't be afraid. Just keep watching these videos and get your feet wet, Darlene. There's plenty of uh, upside for you. Cool. Well, that's uh, that's all the Q&A for today. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. And I'll probably continue to do these uh, these Q&A sessions as the questions roll in. Uh, so if you haven't already, you know, you've got a question that you want to get uh, answered, leave a comment in the bottom of the at the bottom of this video or, you know, uh, shoot me an email at askjrod at St. Paul Research.com. I want to hear from you. I want to answer your questions. So please, uh, you know, shoot them in. And of course, uh, if you haven't already, if you like the content, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the Rich Retirement Letter TV channel on YouTube. We do these videos all the time. And, uh, you know, really, uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you get, uh, you'll get alerts letting you know when these videos come out so that you don't miss anything. So thanks so much for watching uh, today's video. Again, for Rich Retirement TV, I'm J-Rod, and I'll see you next time.